Before Djoser adopted the Pyramid II model, the kings of the first dynasty were buried in highly complex mud brick structures, sunk in the desert and divided into several chambers. Some of these early royal tombs had an extraordinary monumental character, which reveals the already complex level of the society that built such tombs. Djoser was not only the first king who used stone as a material for royal tomb building, but also the first king to build a pyramid. It is also important to stress that his pyramid represents unequaled innovation in monumental construction, both in size and materials used. Djoser's pyramid was built in stages, beginning as a square mastaba and eventually being transformed into the final six-step pyramid. It is unclear what the process of building Djoser's pyramid actually entailed, but Jean-Philippe Laue, who excavated the site, believes that the pyramid was built in six different stages. If one assumes that this is correct, then there was a major enlargement every three years, for Djoser reigned for 19 years. The implications of building such a complex, which was the size of a large town in the third millennium BCE, cannot be emphasized enough. Indeed, this would require tight political control of the people and resources of Egypt at an early period. Djoser's pyramid complex is unique in that it is orientated north-south rather than east-west, like the Giza pyramids, and possesses a number of buildings and structures which are not seen elsewhere. It is thought that Djoser's pyramid complex was intended to model Egypt, mainly because of its north-south division and because of the symbolism of the buildings within this complex. It was the first king of the fourth dynasty, Snefru, who built the first true pyramid. His reign is particularly interesting for Snefru built several pyramids before being able to attain the true pyramidal form. One can see obvious continuation from several of Snefru's pyramid complexes to those at Giza. Just like the step pyramid built by Djoser, Snefru's first attempt at a pyramid at Meidum was built in stages, starting with a seven-step pyramid. This was afterwards enlarged to a pyramid of eight steps. Later in his reign, Snefru sent his workmen back to Meidum to fill out the original step pyramid as a true pyramid. One of the new features of the pyramid complex introduced in Meidum was the causeway, which was to become standard for such monuments. For reasons unknown, Snefru abandoned Meidum and founded a new cemetery in Dashur. There, he built two other large pyramids known as the Bent and Red or North Pyramids. The Ben Pyramid started as a smaller pyramid with a slope of about 60 degrees. Faced with some structural problems with the foundation, the builders of this pyramid had to adjust the slope to around 55 degrees. Since the stress on the pyramid was too great and the structure lacked stability, as reflected in its pronounced bend, this monument was abandoned and a new pyramid was started in North Dashur. Around year 30 of his reign, Snefru started work at the Red Pyramid which was built at a much gentler slope than the Ben Pyramid and was also made very carefully from the beginning. This project resulted in the true pyramidal form. The paradigm of the true pyramidal form occurs at Giza. The pyramids here were built over the span of three generations. Khufu was the founder of the Giza Cemetery and the builder of the first and tallest pyramid ever built in Egypt. At Giza, the Old Kingdom Pyramid Complex namely the mortuary and valley temples, was expanded and standardized. The pyramid causeways were extended to nearly one kilometer and reached the Nile and the valley temple. Khufu's wall and causeway even defined an area of harbors, settlement, and possibly a palace by the river. The mastaba tombs that surrounded Khufu's pyramid also represented a new form of necropolis arrangement, with its orthogonal design giving the idea of an organized city of the dead with streets and a preconceived plan. The three different pyramid complexes at Giza were enclosed by stone and clay walls, which are still partially preserved around the complexes of Khafre and Menkhare. It is not clear how these three pyramids were actually built, but it is important to notice that this was the result of many years of experimenting and pyramid building. Note that Khufu was Snefru's son, 
and as such, the workers and architects of the Great Pyramid had already acquired sufficient knowledge and skills to take this leap forward. After Snefru, it appears that the technique for pyramid building was standardized, and step pyramids were never built again in Egypt.